In this workflow, we're going to create two surfaces, a top and a bottom, and then we'll subtract them to compute a volume for this stockpile. First thing we want to do is clean up the drawing. We want to freeze layers that have text labels that are drawn at zero elevation because we don't want to include them in our surface. In the 2D drafting ribbon, I've got the freeze tool and I'll pick on an entity on each of the layers I want to freeze. Now that we've done that, we'll find we'll only have 3D entities which we can use for creating our surface. On the home ribbon of the civil workspace, we have the tin tool. Now I'm going to create my bottom surface first, and to do that we start the tin command and we just pick the 3D polyline, and then I hit B to tell it to use all of the linear entities as break lines. So there's our bottom surface. Now I can inspect it by switching my visual style to realistic and make sure that it's providing me an accurate representation of the base of this stockpile. Now we're going over to the Civil Explorer and I'm going to change some properties for the first surface. I'm going to change its name to bottom and I'm also going to modify its visibility properties so that we don't see the triangles, but we can still see the rectangle that surrounds it. Now we're going to create a second surface. And this time we're going to use all of the CAD entities, and that's going to become our top surface. So I'll change its name first, from surface one to top. And now I want to inspect that surface. And it's clear that we have one outlier point that is clearly inaccurate. So I'm going to use the quad here. We mouse over it and we can select the option to remove points. That allows me to snap to a point that I want to exclude from the surface and you can see the tin is redrawn. Now I'm satisfied that the top and the bottom surface are accurate and we're going to generate a volume. So I'll create a volume surface. We'll start by selecting the bottom surface, which is represented just by the rectangle. And then for the second datum, we'll select the second surface. There is no bounding area, so I'll hit enter. And now the volumetric surface is created down below. Now we can look at the properties of that surface and we can see what the volume is between top and bottom. We can also see the 2D area, the 3D area, and some statistics about the triangles that make that surface. Thanks for learning about surface volumetrics with me.